Every toy in my collection has a story. How I came upon it, why I bought it, or even just some random or obscure bit of info about it. Admittedly, not all of them are amazing, funny, or interesting. But I think some of them are, and I'd like to tell you about them, one toy at a time. This is Stories from the Toy Shelf, Redux. Episode 2, My Robot Kick Your Robot's Butt. Originally posted July 24, 2012. It's a world transformed, where things are not what they seem. It is the world of the Transformers, a world of heroic Autobots and evil Decepticons. My introduction to the world of Transformer toys actually didn't start with the Transformers per se, but with the original Japanese line called Diaclone that Hasbro eventually ended up transforming into the robots that we know today. Coming home from one of his business trips, my dad brought home a nice blue F-15 Eagle jet that could amazingly change into a robot. He even came with a tiny little man with magnets on his feet that could neatly fit inside the jet's cockpit. Now as cool as the toy was, what I found even cooler was this little booklet that came with the toy. It was a catalog of all the other robots that were in the line. As it turned out, my little blue jet was just the tip of the iceberg. There were two or three more jets like him. Trains, dinosaurs, insects, and a whole lot of cars and trucks that all turned into robots. I was instantly hooked and begged my dad to get me more. Around the same time, my neighbor, who was my age, also got his first Diaclone robot. Maybe our dads were just on the same trip. His was a bright red Lamborghini Countach that also had a little man with magnets and also transformed into a robot. But he had something else. Information about this new cartoon that he rented from Sonics, which was our local video store. He told me that this cartoon featured the robots we owned and that his red car robot was a good guy and that my blue jet was a bad guy. And as if that wasn't enough, he said that his robot kicked my robot's butt in the cartoon. This was too much for me to believe. I went straight down to the video store and looked for this supposed new cartoon. At that point, I didn't even know what it was called. Almost immediately, I saw plastered on the wall of new releases, a poster of this epic robot battle scene with my jet robot prominently featured. Or at least, I figured he was my blue jet since the poster was a black and white photocopy. Oh yeah, and as for my neighbor's Lamborghini robot, he was there too, somewhere in the background off to the side. Anyway, that was the first time I saw the name The Transformers with their famous catchphrase, more than meets the eye. I think I stood there staring at the poster for what seemed to be an eternity, trying to soak up every single detail, every single robot. After eventually regaining my composure, I handed in my allowance for the week to rent out a Betamax copy of the Transformers and went straight home to watch it. Almost immediately, I was lost in this amazing world of heroic Autobots and evil Decepticons with such memorable characters like Optimus Prime and Megatron, the scheming Starscream, and the monotonous Ultra Flange, is that even a word? Voice of Soundwave. The cool, cool Jazz, and even the delusional Cliff Jumper voiced by a very familiar Casey Kasem. They all made an impression on me that to this day, I haven't forgotten. Oh, and it turned out my friend was right. My jet robot turned out to be one of the bad guys, and he wasn't even a main dude, but a Decepticon lackey called Thundercracker. And my friend's car robot really was a good guy, Sideswipe. Although if you really want to nitpick, it wasn't really Sideswipe that kicked Thundercracker's butt. It was his twin, Sunstreaker. Thanks for checking out Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. For more stories, please like and subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell for updates, or visit my website at storiesfromthetoyshelf.com, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next one.